Hello, Max. How are Thank you doing? You doing? Doing well, man. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Where is here? To be here? You know, happy, happy to talk. Happy to talk with you. Okay. All right. So, for those who don't know who you are, um, it would be good if you can give like a little bit of uh, a little brief uh, autobiography. Sure. Sure. Of yourself. Well, uh, me, I'm uh, originally from Germany. Um, I met Charles back in, uh, I think, 2012, probably 2012 or 2013. No, 2012, actually, when I came down to the Dominican Republic. Um, I used to sail on uh, uh, quite a lot as a, as a professional, um, in, on professional level in the youth. And um, I used to come to Cabarete for, for some training session uh, with Rulo, who has been um, coaching there and set up a nice, um, yeah, nice, nice base. Sailing academy, sort of. Or sailing, or sailing academy, yeah, that's the right word. Yeah. Um, and then uh, after, after I finished high school, I, um, I also stopped sailing more or less because I was, for the boat I was sailing, I was a little bit, or not just a little bit, or just very underweight weight and i couldn't see an option to to keep going and move on to to olympic level and then they offered me offered me a position as a coach there uh so i i was uh anyway i was a bit tired of germany uh about the about the whole uh, situation there and i just wanted to to see something new get outside and always was dreaming of living on the beach doing learning how to kite surf learning or getting better at surfing so for me, it was a quick, quick decision to, to take this opportunity and move, move down to Cabarete. But how did you know, how did you know of Cabarete when you, when you made that decision? Well, Ca Ca Cabarete was, actually, I got the invite from, from Rulo, right? Or from Ari back then. Um, but how did you know them? them? Well, them, I, because I, I used to train there uh, already when I ah, was, okay. I think the first time I went down there was 2009 or 2010. But just for for sailing for like a training camp one week training camp when it was uh gotcha. cold in germany uh in winter time we used uh i was going several times to dominican republic to to train there and yeah. so they so they knew me i had a really good connection with with rulo and uh then once i told him that i'm gonna stop sailing he he offered me uh, or him and ari they they asked me if i want to come down there and uh do some coaching. So that's, that's gotcha. actually how I ended up for in, in Cabaret. Yeah. So when you mean stop sailing, you mean just like stop sailing for competition? Yeah. Stop sailing for competition. Uh, I mean, stop trying to, or stop competing. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no more competing. I've been competing since I was like 12 years old or 11 years old. Um, been traveling a lot for that. And uh, eventually also I, I was a bit tired of always, um, trying to be in shape, always like taking steps back, never really going to parties. And I was, I had the feeling I had to catch up on some things. So then also, um, with the whole situation of being underweight, not really having the, or always struggling with, with weight and size. Um, I couldn't really see myself moving on doing the next step, moving on to Olympic level. So that's why, um, it, it was an offer that came at the right time. And for me it was, it was a nice opportunity as yes. Also, I was always interested in, in doing some coaching too. So yeah. it, all, it, all just, it all just matched the situation really well. And then, uh, yeah, I packed my, packed my suitcase, flew down to Cabaret. didn't know where I was staying. Ari was saying, uh, we'll get an apartment for you. Some guy, some taxi <laughs> driver picked me up from the airport, <laughs> dropped me off in the Cajon. <laughs> and yeah, that's the, that was it. That was the start. And then... Um, how long did that la how long did that last how long did that go on no like the like that whole part like you being temporary how many years was this that was almost two years i think one year and three quarters i think i came in uh july 2012 and left in april 2014 oh, okay and throughout that time you were just working coaching everything exactly exactly yeah. working at the at the laser training center there for ari uh running running clinics first of all supporting rulo and um still learning a lot because i didn't have much coaching experience also doing some beginner lessons and then uh 
with more time, I, I was also able to take more responsibility, run my own training camps. And, uh, um, yeah, so just working there. Yeah. All right. So we'll put the whole story out in a way like, so you were sailing since you're 12 years old. I'm guessing you got into I, sailing. I heard, right. I mean, I'm, I'm really compete. I would say I'm, I'm competing really on, on, on the international level since I was 12 years old before, but I'm sailing for many more years already. And how did you, how do you get into sailing at such a young age? Your dad or your mom or? Yeah, through my, through my dad, my, my grandfather actually was a boat builder or used to build some boats on a, on a lake in Germany. My father was yeah. also, <laughs> always sailing. And um, why are you laughing? <laughs> a, a German guy that builds boats back in the day. I wonder where those boats went. Back in the day, bro. <laughs> And uh, so we always we always started uh, to do summer holidays on the on the boat of my parents, and then of course my parents wanted us as kids to to learn how to sail. So you go to summer camp sailing school, which is not at the beginning doesn't have anything to do with competitions, right? It's more like having fun with other kids, being on a boat, fooling around, yeah. learning to sail a bit. And step by step, um, there was like a local regatta, local competition, and I wanted to do that. And then I, I did it and I, I won it right away. So then as a kid, you, you want to do another competition. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's where it started first, very, very regional. And then eventually already at uh, 2012, uh, sorry, not 2012, but 12, 12 years old, um, actually starting to also travel internationally. And what sort of got you like, were you always uh, competitive or what made you interested in maybe competing? Yeah, I was, since, since I'm like, I don't know, since I can think of, I'm, I'm super competitive and, and super ambitious on, on basically anything I do. So, so there, I always like to compete. I always liked sports and then in, in sailing, you know, and I was, I was starting to get good at it. And then of course you, you just pursue, pursue that, uh, that sport where you you believe you have the highest chances and yeah, I was super competitive already as a kid, maybe too competitive even sometimes. <laughs> and how far did that, how far did you go up? Like what, to put it into perspective, like how high did you go in the sailing world? Well, in, in, in the youth, actually I was doing quite well winning, winning the youth European championship in 2010, I think. Like in first place. The, yeah. In one of the, one of the main youth classes. Um, and then also in, in, then I qualified the next year, yeah, it stepped up one, one, uh, one level. There's like a bigger sail when you get older, but the same boat, um, also there on nationally, I, I won the, uh, won the selections for the worlds, did, did all the international competitions. Um, so, so I was there, you know, eventually in, when I, when I moved on to the, let's say bigger sail, I was already struggling a little bit with weight and it, it worked fine but i could never do a top 10 so i would say like on the worlds i finished like 20 or something like that it's 200 still 280 people you finish 20 you're you're on a good for sure on a good level um yeah. but um pro probably the biggest uh biggest achievement there in youth was winning the the europeans back then oh, okay that's like 220 competitors and, and winning that one was for sure a big one and you become first that's good yeah. And so this whole, so I guess sailing has been like a big part of your life, like a sort of a guiding, it's been moving you forward to where you are today. Yeah, you could say so. I mean, even, even still now, I mean, sailing is a big part of my life and um, it's still a high priority. I mean, even now I've been studying now for six years, but if, if I had the chance to go sailing on, on, a, on a good level, or if I had an interesting project, I would always put that first, you know, so then studying you, you you find your way you just write the exam the next semester or whatever but if, if i had the chance to to do something um with sailing then i always try to jump on the opportunity so it's it's still a big part of my life yeah and what made you because you left germany at 18 basically one week after your graduation party and you started working right away what made you after two years decide to go back to study like what was the the reason to do that no it, i mean like why didn't you go right away why didn't you go straight out of 18 years old boom right into university why did you i think for me it was really important to do that step of not going to study right away because um i needed also the time of also of com like a 
of competing and just doing other stuff. Like I always want, like I said before, I always want to learn how to kite surf. I always want to live on the beach, live like the surfer's lifestyle. I was always really um, uh, curious about that and always thought that that's like the best thing that, uh, uh, that, that a dream come true. Um, yeah. And uh, just really not, not, not thinking about many competitions anymore. Um, I, I definitely needed that also to, to develop personally. I think it was a, was a really important step for me. If I, if I think that I would have went to university right away, I don't believe that would have been a good step because you were there, then you have to study again. You were in this, in, basically in the circle again and missing out on, uh, let's say, on, on, on some, some things that, that I would now miss, you know, especially in, in regard to personal development. I mean, you go to a country, you don't speak the language, um, you don't know anyone. And uh, just to make your way around there, it uh, was, was a good, really good experience for me. So what would you say are the top things you've learned from that experience of like living solo, working solo? I guess all those things were sort of like the first time doing those things solo for that much time. So what have you, what were like the key takeaways that you got from that, that you wouldn't have gotten any other way? I think it, there, there's a, a few interesting things. First of all, it's taking, you got to take the responsibility of your own actions, right? You fuck up. It's your fucking deal. It's not like you call your dad or whatever and everybody knows your dad or you, you have some friends and you're, it doesn't really matter. It's like you go there, you fuck up, you fuck up. You got to go there. You, you take responsibility for that. Um, and also you need to, you're in fully in charge of your life. You decide when to get up, you decide, um, who to hang out with, you decide what to eat, you decide how you want to, uh, how you want to perform at work. You, there, there's so many things that all of a sudden, uh, you have to do that. Um, before there was always the falling back. If something goes wrong, you're living at your parents' house. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Uh, you don't need to worry about rent. You don't need to worry about your salary. You don't need to worry about spending money. It, it's just all very comfortable. Yeah. Um, so I think this is, this is probably taking responsibility is, is one of the main things. And the second thing I would say definitely is also the language and the culture, right? You go there, I'm the German guy. You think everybody is going to be the same there. Everybody's going to be on, on time. Everybody's going to stick to the agreements and you learn very yeah. quickly that things might just go a little different down there. Um, and that there's also ways to, to deal with that situation, but um, that you have to adapt in certain, in certain areas. Um, and especially with learning the language, there was a big, big change also in, uh, in the communication that you could do with, with locals. I mean, you for sure know that also once you speak Spanish, um, many things change. Uh, sure. And at the beginning, maybe the first half year, you're still the gringo, you're still the guy, the white guy with money, even though you're 18, you don't have fucking money at all. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a perspective and it's, it's much harder to, to, um, so yeah, to communicate on, on a solid level also with, uh, let's say, also with the locals. And I think that changed a lot with learning the language, uh, which I think was, in, in general, a really good experience. So it was sort of like becoming independent was maybe the biggest thing or getting closer to understanding what it is to be independent. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you take, you need to, like I said before, you need to take responsibility for, responsible, responsibility for your own decisions, right? That's, that's yeah. a big one. And whatever you do, I mean, you can, you, you decide, right? I, I could have decided not to learn a language. I know people who have been living in Cabo Rede for three years. They speak Ola and that's it. Yeah. I mean, you, you, there's different, you know, there's different, always different path that you can, that you can take and you somehow will, will manage and you will somehow move around. But those decisions you got to take, it's not that your parents telling you to go to Spanish class or your parents yeah. telling you to do this or your teachers telling you to do this or that or whatever. It's, you, you decide for yourself. No, it is, uh, it's true. And when you look back on it, do you think that uh, you could have used, like, do you, I'm not sure if it's regrets, but do you think like, ah, I could have done this better, I could have done that differently and it would have impacted me differently now? Or you think it sort of all played out how it should have played out? You know, I, I, I'm, I think it all played out how it should, should have played out because even the bad experience that you take and the wrong decisions that you took is yeah. been like a, 
<laughs> it's been like, <laughs> and there were a couple for sure. Um, yeah, I was it's there. Like, you know, it's it's been like kind of, <laughs> it's been it's been kind of like a good uh, learning ground. You go sure. there. Um, it's kind of the, it's also the, the wild west. Uh, so you take you take your wrong decisions and you realize really really quickly that they were wrong, but it's still you can still manage and, and deal with them, right? And and those yeah. those things you don't do in the future anymore. So so for sure I'm I don't I don't really regret many things because I mean this probably everybody would say that. This is like uh Yeah, yeah sure. Everybody would say, Yeah, I wouldn't be here where I am today if I didn't have those experience. Yeah. But it, in in a way it's like that. But it is true, yeah. You wouldn't everything everything plays a role in a way you know even leaving your house five seconds earlier or later can have a drastic change in your life even though it might not seem like it but i think that everything plays a role that's for sure and so with this like you stayed here for two years you worked you did all this and um at the time did you like because now you're looking back but when you left back to germany did you feel like you were a different person like you learned all these things or you're just like ah I'm Max and that's it. Or is it like now with hindsight that you're like, ah, this taught me all these things. No, def definitely already. I, I was feeling that I, that I also, when I left that, that, that I improved on, on many areas. I mean, in hindsight, you, you I think you can see it even more, sure. especially on the decisions that you take afterwards. Well, so they call um, it hindsight 2020. <laughs> it's all clear. <laughs> no, so, so, so I think it, but it definitely was that way. However, also, I mean, maybe you remember, but for me, it was very hard to take the step to go back to Germany because in, in the end, everything was, was going quite, was, I was very happy in, in, in Cabaret, right? I had the good job. I was earning some decent money for, for, for the surroundings, for the, also for the amount that, that you spend, um, having a good life, doing, being out, outside a lot, doing a lot of kite surfing, a lot of surfing. So everything was kind of settled also. Yeah. And to to take take the step from from a life that maybe you always dreamed of, be living on the beach, um, and and being able to do all these things, and going back to to Germany where nothing compares to that, um, yeah. was definitely a tough one. For so, the time. how did you justify? How are you justifying that? Like you're saying, like you left your dream spot to go back to somewhere that's not your dream spot why why do that i think the the main the main problem is that in coverette everything or many things they just stay the same and you, the more i like the more years i come back and the more time passes you just you just realize that yeah. and it's a nice it's a nice bubble where everything is super cool but it's always the same it's the same guys trying to uh uh, sell you drugs on the beach it's the same guys trying to sell you necklaces on the beach it's the same guys being drunk walking around talking stupid yeah. shit it's the same guys uh same experts being being there just trying to make their their own way so it, it's kind of the same topics all all over again and there's very little progression so i i feel like for for the two years that i've been there it was really good for me to to have this experience but i also feel like staying there for a longer time yeah i think i would have i would have stopped my progress um because you just you just get so comfortable on on in where you are um and there's not so many then after like i said before the, the points were like learning the language learning the culture meeting the people and all of a sudden you have done all this yeah so then what what's the next step right yeah. what what are so, you gonna do so what are you progressing towards I think, uh, in, especially now that I've been uh, in university for six years, was uh, was a really good, good experience. Just also progressing on a on a professional level, developing developing there, having so many opportunities. And in, in, in Germany, it's you have so many opportunities to where you want to work, where to to develop in on a professional level. And I, I don't see that in in Cabaret. Um There you can. There are very few opportunities. And uh, those opportunities are very un unsure. And also, in the end, if you compare it, uh, most of them are uh, ba also badly paid, right? And it's 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 there's no. Well, it's paid according to the the economy that you're in, right? Like, sorry, like you're you're paid in regards to what 
the country is, you know, like the country, for example, the minimum wage is $160 a month. So if you're getting, let's say a thousand or a thousand six hundred a month, that's 10 times the minimum wage. So it's like, I don't know what it is in, in Germany, the minimum, what's the minimum someone makes per year? Uh, like we have 20? minimum minimum wage per, per hour is uh, nine euro. Or let's just say in the year, like 20,000, 30,000 euros. Yeah, probably. It's so let's just say even 20,000 on a low number. Uh, um, if you're making 10 times that you're making 200 grand a year, you know? So that's sort of like how you see it is like here, the minimum is one six or well, it's not one sixty, but it, uh, $2,000 a year. That's the minimum. So if you're making 20 grand a year, you're making 10 times that, even though for Germany, that's only one, you know, it's a yeah, minimum I mean, there. You need to see how, also you need to see how the people with minimum wage live in, uh, in the Dominican Republic and you need to see how the people in Germany live with minimum wage. So you yeah. see in the Dominican Republic, those guys, they don't have running water. Sometimes they don't have a bathroom. They don't have they yeah, the have basics. So the, the basics are, it's, it's way different. You know, here, uh, even if you don't work, you will get supplied a, a flat. You're supplied with the, the basics so you can survive. So you're, you most Do you think that helps people? Do you think that the fact that they have all that accessible to them, whether they decide to be productive or not productive is like a good thing? Or does that sort of like slow people down in a way? Because like, ah, if I don't want to do anything, my worst case is actually not that bad. Well, it, you know, it's, it's not that it's comfortable, to be honest. I mean, you can have, you can have the minimum, you can buy some food, but you cannot go out to eat or you cannot go do a lot of social activities. And I think in, yeah. in, uh, economy like like germany it is very important to have this kind of social system i mean i, I feel like this is in in general it's a good thing yeah. yeah okay but it doesn't like you don't think that there's some people that they don't push themselves because they have access to there's that. always these people yeah but then there's also a, a lot of people who because of whatever reasons that might not even be their fault they fall into this uh, in this position and uh they actually they're actually helped by that and they are in, in no way uh aiming to to stay in this situ situation right so yeah so i i think and i think it's important to have this no and like in some ways it's true that at least it helps you get by those tough times and uh, let's yeah. say especially now there's a lot of people in tough times so if there's some sort of systems that can back those guys up then um that's good but then we sort of got we sort of went sidetracked like where we're talking about your university you did the six years and you said that helped you a lot what were the things that you studied during those six years well i did i did two degrees i first started in sports science i did a degree in sports science because back then i was also when i came back from uh, from dominican republic i started kind of my own coaching business here in in europe yeah. uh, did some private coaching uh, next to the university work so as, as much as i could do there uh, and started this up so for me it was the back then was the plan to, to become a professional sailing coach, right? And then, then you go in that, that kind of business, you make your experience, of course, also you do, do some mistakes, you like, you learn and, and you, and then you see, okay, how far can I go there? And for, for me, it was like, at a point was that I felt I'm, I don't, I don't see my, uh, I don't see enough opportunities to, to stick or to put all my effort in, into this kind of business. Yeah. Uh, and also in the end, I just didn't make the effort. I, you're competing against uh, other people who are um, asking for quite little money, especially like from Eastern Europe, who have also a whole different um, understanding of salaries, understanding also a whole different life standards. So they need a lot, like Dominican Republic in a way, just not yeah. as big a gap, right? So they, it's very tough to to compete on that level, and it will be. Um, for me, so it's hard I just, to like separate yourself from them because they're like, why would we pay you, let's say a thousand dollars a day when this guy's saying he'll take $50 a day. There you go. And why, like, so it's just like a very difficult thing to justify. Yeah, exactly. Basically, basically that, then you say, yeah, well, but I'm, I'm paying taxes. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, but, but in the end for them, they don't care. Right. I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe we would be the, I would be the same if I'm in the situation of needing to pay and I get. I get a coach who there's good coaches out there. So I, I get a coach for half the price who might be on, on a similar level. Then why would I go for the guy who has? And how, how do you see that? Like with coaching, how do you find that every coach 
in a way is good like you like you know how do you see no, that like definitely, uh, not. definitely not i feel like there's a lot of bad coaches out there there's what makes a bad coach the, the first of all and this is the this is the big big one is first of all is structure in in my in my opinion there's a lot of coaches who are just very unstructured and by being unstructured and by not putting out clear rules um especially in in the youth um you will run into many problems this is number one number two is that uh some coaches uh especially younger ones they they do not have the balls to go or to to make their point clear and to go against what for example the parents want um you know so they 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 are not they're too soft uh, they're, they're too soft so if the parents come to them they just want to avoid trouble so or if the kids say no we don't want to do that and they say okay well i don't want five kids to be upset with me i just do something else which with what they are happy which yeah. in, which then doesn't mean that it might be the right thing there so and i realized a lot for example when i took over certain some some training groups you work a cup first you work a couple of months with the group and teach them how they should train properly yeah. how they how they are disciplined during training when to put the focus when also to be uh, to do whatever they want um and how to actually make make a training effective without being in sailing it's without being five hours on the water how you can make a effective training session in three hours boom you just go um you need the structure you need the discipline from the sailors you need certain certain things that that have to work there and um if they are not taught that then you spend first you, you spent the first month just trying to to make them realize to build a foundation that actually exactly that this is actually the right way to do it because at the beginning they are not gonna like it because they are used that the coaches does whatever they want and they are kind of just being around yeah. so at the beginning you will you will run into a lot of discussions they are going to be quite unmotivated until the point where they realize that the way they are trained that the way that we are training now is actually a lot more effective is actually yeah. a lot more fun and actually everybody improves a lot faster and so this why, is fun. why is it more effective why is it more fun and i'm guessing because it's more effective and it's fun you definitely improve faster so that sort of solves that one but what is it that what is it in let's say that training that sort of might apply to to life day to day you know like is it like the people that are good right or the people that develop these strategies do those strategies that they have for let's say sailing in this case do that do you also see that translate into their personal lives at all or it's sort it's, of unmixed like you've seen some good sailors that they're really good sailors but they're just their life is chaos but when they're on the boat they do really well rarely 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 quite quite rarely all right so then tell me about that then no i'm i'm in, in in general also i'm also but this is also like a personal also a personal style with what i really like a lot i mean there's also people who are and i'm learning that i'm also learning that now with working with the the sailing team or running this project that on, on the bigger boat yeah. since this year is that also some some guys they will do a good job without having this strict kind of structure they still yeah. need a structure but some some of them they like it very like you are at uh, we, you say 10 a.m. and 10 a.m. we go and then we are back at 12 12 p.m. and 12 p.m. okay we are, we are back they don't like it if we come back at five past twelve some other guys they're gonna be like okay let's meet at ten they will be there at ten but then there's something okay we go ten ten oh five no problem um, and they are actually more stressed of trying to to um, be there exactly at ten o'clock so there's there's different different type of guys i'm i was i was always a fan or i'm a big fan of really being strict if we say 10 it's 10 so five past 10 no two past 10 um, yeah but uh, i also I've had that conversation example. with you before yeah <laughs> i uh i i also work with uh, sailors for example from south america and yeah. this doesn't work with them yeah but are they still like at the same level would you say the guys yeah, they can they can be on on the, on the same. Level. So then, what makes them? So then, how? So how do you see that? So you're saying there's no fixed ideal. It's sort of like a case by case uh, situation. In so like let's say let's say the fine tuning always has to be done on on the athlete himself okay, because custom. there's no yeah. there's no there's not gonna be one program that works on every athlete and yeah. they can all be super good athletes. 
yeah. but it, it will not be one a one one system that works for everybody. However, yeah. the let's say the the general idea or the general thing that works for everybody. So there, there should be a there should there always needs to be a structure. Now, what what can be the structure? Is the structure that um, you have to be there at, at ten, or if if it's five past ten, no worries, it's still a yeah. structure, right? Um, if we say we do in front of a training session, you, you check out, you, you set the goals of the day, you, you do that with them. Okay, perfect. Is it, it, you set the structure, but maybe with some guys who realize on the water, uh, we should have, we should focus a little bit more on that. And they, they are happy that, that you do the switch with other guys. They are, they said, no, no, we said, those are the five things. I want to do the five things. Yeah. So, so I think you need to have the general idea, the general structure, um, and the general plan. However, the fine tuning always has to be on, on the athlete himself. So what would be some of the takeaways or the carryovers you would say from being an athlete or striving to become like a, a better athlete that could relate to one's personal life? I, I, I see it every day, man. You go to, especially in university, you see, you go there, you, you, for example, I take the, I take the example of an exam. So an exam basically is the same like a competition. You have a fixed date, you know, this is where you have to deliver. And then, yeah. then you check, okay, how can I deliver at this date? What mm -hmm. can I do? So you make, again, you make a plan, you make a structure, you know, okay, at this point in time, I need to be able to solve these kind of um, tasks. I need to be able, I need to know those kind of things. Yeah. And then you, then, then you basically go back and you know, okay, I need to study two weeks for this exam. Yeah. And then, you know, on Monday, you need to be some more or less there on Tuesday, you need to be more or less there. And then you're, you go into the, you go into the uh, exam confident, not nervous and you hit it. Yeah. Then there's other people, or if for some people are not used to this kind of thinking about preparing for, let's say a competition, preparing for an exam, yeah. they will go, they maybe either they start very early. So they fucking, they, they sit there for one month which in the end also is very ineffective. They, they might write a good grade, but it's fun. It's ineffective. Yeah. You just sit there and you study and you study and you study everything and you, you go completely crazy. By the time you write the exam, you will need to go to holiday for one week. Yeah. Um, or there's these guys who have no clue at all. They start late. They realize two days before the exam, I'm nowhere close to making it. They, they start panicking and they're, um, they will have a tough time during the exam. Also, they then, once they, they will start writing the exam, they're going to be nervous because they know that they haven't prepared properly. Um, and then also the, the end result will be much harder to, to achieve. Um, just a quick thing. I'll just go to the bathroom really quick. You know, it's funny. I was about to say that. Okay. So <laughs> we'll do a little break right here and then we'll be back. Yeah.
So you're saying about all the different university pe people you see in university. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, you know, in, in the end, it's, it, you can call it or you can make the example with the university exam, you can transfer the whole thing about um, your job of having a project and knowing you need to deliver the project at a certain certain time. Um, and then you just t need to take the steps back and, and organize and, and structure, create a, a structure on, on what you believe that um, is going to work for you to, or for the team to, to be able to deliver the project in, in time and in, with good quality. So wherever you go, you will come back to those kind of situations where you will have a fixed state where you need to deliver something yeah. and you need to create a plan on, on how, to, how to get there and how to uh, deliver a good, good result. And of course, there, there will be times where you, you create a structure or you create a plan and it's not going to work out. Yeah. It's the same, same in, same in coaching. You, you may, you maybe have an idea, you, you have everything, you have everything planned out, but also, um, but then there's a situation that you've never seen before. You didn't have in mind and it just messes up your plan. So, so how do you, so finish that thought then, and then I have a, a follow-up. So, so if, you know, no matter where you go, you're asked how, how you could transfer this, this to life. It's in, in your professional career, you will have these things um same will be also in on uh on your with your family where you plan for some or where you set some goals for your family or like how how do you want to get there how you create the structure how like you want to move in a house together okay what do we need to do to get there um there's wherever you go you will have these kind of situations um so this is this is just where i where i want to go right and then i think your your question now goes into the direction of what you do once your plan doesn't work out. Um, it wasn't only that, it was like, so what you're saying, just to answer that, is that you were saying what you find is a factor in success is structure, having a plan, sort of knowing where you want to go yeah. and creating a, a plan to get to that. Yeah. And then breaking it up into bite size. And yeah. what you're mentioning was that uh, some people might, look, for example, the exams, you're like, some people might start studying for an exam one month in advance, hardcore, but you say it's not effective, right? In some cases. You know, it's, 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 so, one way, it's one way to do it. And so let's say you create a plan, yeah. right? Yeah. How, so you, so it's like, I guess there's no, because I had a question of like how to be effective, but that means you just basically make a plan as simple and as condensed as possible, like without as much fat, you know, like you want it to be lean, the plan. But then let's say you make this plan and you think it's gonna work like what you said with some teams in coaching. How soon can you tell if that plan is effective? You, you or is it that it you never know? No, you, it's, it's quite simple. You break it down, you have your main goal and you need to know it, you need to know, said like, goals in between smaller ones and you you need to know okay at, at this point in time you so you if have you're reaching those smaller goals then you guess exactly. it's effective in, i mean in, in for example in in uh, project management it's called milestones yeah sure you put a milestone that people this is how a whole project management goes they they make a project they put different milestones and then uh they'll see if they actually receive uh if they actually achieve the milestones in time this is also how they, how most of the, the people monitor their project to, to check if it's actually going well or not. So if you have a project and you don't have milestones or some sort of tracking system, then it's sort of wasted efforts, you're saying? I'm not saying it's wasted efforts, but um, I, I, I think it's a big gamble if it's going to work in the end or not. I mean, yeah. And especially if it's like a long-term thing, if it's something that might take a year or two years or three years, then you might as well spend a little bit of time Sure. Uh, setting up the structure Definitely. so that's a bit so now we, so just to, you can confirm this you're saying structure is like a key and some people lack structure yeah. and those people usually struggle yeah. and would you say then with this sort of structure which is almost a discipline because you have to follow the structure so you have to be disciplined to follow that structure that you create or that plan um, in the end it actually becomes fun because you actually get results and you can track yourself and then it's, it almost becomes like a game. If you want to put that, yeah, sure. Yeah. 
I mean, in the end, what what is what is fun, Charles? I mean, you you know that is it fun to to uh, deliver good results to to achieve to achieve good things, or this is the most fun thing I think everybody can have because you feel yeah. valued, you feel like you do a good job. Um, yeah. People people start saying good job. You maybe then also on a monetary basis you move up the ladder. You do you know it's it's just a uh, it, there's no there's I don't I haven't seen one single person told me get delivering a good result <laughs> or or having success is not fun haven't i haven't met one yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i guess yeah that's it that's it yeah it's true but then so with that being said you know how is it though that so many people in this world right now are quote unquote and i'm talking i mean so many people in the world let's say that have access to um the internet okay I don't know what's that percentage now. It's pretty high in the world. Why is it that they, they say they're having fun, but all they might be doing is watching Netflix series, uh, swiping on Instagram. Uh, why is it that all these guys are saying they're having fun? Do you think all this sort of fun is short, short lived? Like they're just clouded because what you're saying from what I understand is that success and progress is where there is like true fun that success and progress might take time to achieve but in the end that's where you find the most let's say fulfillment in a way so why is it though that so many like not so many people actually follow that i think there's there's one one simple answer to that and i'm, I'm sure you know that because also you you read a lot and it's it's called short-term pleasures and long-term pleasure and yeah. for example, you go for Netflix, you go on, on social media, you do, you do all these things. They give you short, short term pleasure. Yeah. Um, and achieving a big goal, the way to achieve it might not be fun. Let's put it like, let's be honest yeah. about that. It's not fun. Yeah. So either you are, you're the kind of guy who is, let's say, basically deceiving yourself, yeah. being there and just like taking no responsibilities, making it easy for yourself. Um, going back home, going to work, going back home, watching Netflix, doing this, doing that, doing that. And by that, just always getting the, the short-term pleasures. And, and this is how your brain, brain works, right? Then you're, you, you think everything's fine. Um, but, but then, or you have the guys that, that look maybe one step further and see, okay, maybe I have two or three weeks of um, no fun ahead. But the end result will be so much more fun and will yeah. give me such an advantage um, and will be an actual, an actual achievement, right? Um, I think those are, those are there's, there's just different mindsets and there's the guys who, who are thinking, the guys who are thinking, doing the long-term thinking with knowing there are some times where it's actually not fun at all yeah. to achieve an end result. Uh, there's way, way less guys who are thinking this way and the easiest, the easier way is to, to go for the shorter pleasure and not go out when it's raining to, to, to go have a run or not stay late in the office. Um, that's the easy way. You say, oh, no, I'm, I'm paid only. I'm, I'm working my 40 hour week. I'm, I'm going back home now because I want to watch Netflix and that's okay. You know, like there is it okay though? Fine. But, um, well, I mean, I think this is a decision everybody has to take for himself. But what if those people, are not actually taking those decisions by themselves, even though they, they think they are. Like they're just sort of doing what everyone else is doing. So it's like the spirit of the times, you know? And actually with that being said, what do you think? Do you think, what is the, I'm sort of grouping it into two things, right? Like people that are sort of just like drifting and people that are actually being active. What is the percentage of active to drifters? This is a question that I cannot answer, Charles. <laughs> no, from no what you see, that. you know, like most people, right? Which, like, from what you know, what you've encountered, how many people are actually taking actions to some bigger goal? And which ones are sort of just like drifting along? Like, I'm not going to say taking it easy, but in a way, just taking it easy. You know, like they're not really pushing themselves, they're just living on the the minimum on the basic on the acceptable the social norm Man, probably 50, I mean, there's 50, always to say like 80 being, 20 being like, 
being in the top 10%, I would, I would maybe go with 10%, 90% around, around there. But again, I have 90% are on the drifting side. Yeah, definitely. Like, ah, okay. don't put it like only drifting side, but let's say it's not 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 trying to no structure not, for like, themselves. Like they don't have an end that they're trying to get to. Yeah, they're, they're, let's say they they do not um, they they do not feel like they or they are not they do not want to put in the extra effort, which at the time might seem uh, exhausting and. Daunting. Uh, yeah and daunting you know and they just go the easy way and, and on, on the other hand Charles you need to see that if everybody would be like let's say stick with that number like the 10 percent how like how do you make the difference I mean we people like who are actually trying to make the difference are only able to make the difference because the most most of the people they they are happy the way it is and they they don't they don't want to make the difference so what let's make let's say put this potential situation out there and and flip the switch and put it 90 percent try to try to be high achievers to stand long whatever okay what is, what's going to happen there it'll be a crazy it's, it's world not experiment yeah it's yeah. It's, it's, it's fucking crazy and we definitely I, we would no probably be people. intergalactic <laughs> <laughs> No, there's there's no way for you to um, to make to to stand out, and in well, in this 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 whole this whole system, the yeah. whole capitalist system is based on whoever works more should also get more, and um, if everybody's just fucking working as much as they can, and yes. how is this gonna work? It's not gonna work. The system only basically works with people who are trying to do more and are doing more, and then but also then on the other hand, uh, getting the benefit of it. Right. So we always need like this sort of good and evil, these active and not active people to for the balance. We should be we should be thankful for this amount of people that are not that are happy the way the way it is, um, because this gives gives other people who are trying to to take the extra step the opportunity to send out. This is how I see. It. Yeah. So for yourself. It might be obvious, but maybe not. What side are you on? What are you trying to to do? Well, I try. I try to be on 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 the on the ten percent side. <laughs> but, yeah, that's why we see the surfboard in the back, the bicycle, the book. There the, you go. Is that a yoga mat? I don't know if that's a yoga mat. That's a yoga mat, and uh, it's a yoga mat. Ah, okay. Now, so and then you're studying now. Are you done studying, by the way, or you said you're gonna go back? No, I'm I'm done for now. I'm I'm thinking about maybe doing a master's degree eventually, but now I've been studying for six years and it's I'm kind of done with studying now. I mean, it's all very theoretically, and then also, it's like I tell you a quick story. It's it, the system also is in a way it's fucked up because I go for example my last exam. I I wrote my last exam, and uh, I studied for it, and then I go to the exam, and there's just things that I've never heard before in my life. Yeah. So. Then there is like this, there was like a summary of the whole content online from another guy, right? I even, because I was so desperate, in the exam, I pull out the summary, put it on my fucking desk, look like a crazy man, and couldn't find the answers. So eventually those, those questions were on one small thing on one slide of a presentation, and they made like a huge... Um, like two two huge tasks of the in the uh, in the exam for it. So okay. this exam I failed. I'm like, okay, boom, I failed. No worries. You have three tries to to do an exam. Yeah. No problem. The I same exam, again. or they change it on every try. Oh, well, they change it. They change it depending oh. on on which professor is 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 doing it, right? Yeah. So I write the exam again. Normal exam, normal things. I write an A, straight A, best yeah. grade. So I'm I'm asking myself. Am I, be, am I being so much smarter now than I used to be two months before? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't doubt yourself. I doubt it. It's possible. I highly, I, I highly doubt it. I'm, saying, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I highly doubt it. Yeah. So imagine now you are, I, I barely passed this exam. Yeah. Then you're not able to rewrite it. So let's say, let's take the, let's take the thought, I barely passed it. You get a really bad grade. Yeah. Boom, fucks up your whole studies, yeah. puts down your average by a lot. 
but you're not being any smarter, any dumber, or pre I didn't prepare much different for the for the second one. Yeah. And you straight a fucking straight. I, I write a fucking straight A. It's not yeah. like you you. It's a small margin. It's like failing or being best in class. Yeah. So you need to, you need to think about is this thing actually working properly? And so this with that. Say yeah. it. Say it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish. No, I just think it's just. Yeah. Go. I'm listening. And this just makes you think about um, the the whole thing, right? About the whole studying and about like also companies only hiring people with a good average. In yeah. the end, there's just also a few tricks that, that you should uh, you should think about in studying. If you're if you have the feeling you're about to fail an exam, fail yeah. it. It's much better than than getting or barely passing and then having a bad grade. You just fail it, write it again. Yeah, it sounds stupid. It sounds it sounds fucking stupid and should not it's be the strategy. Way, in the end, in in the end, this is what what is much better. Most of the time, will be much better for you. And and this whole you know this whole thing, always like looking for the grades, always looking for this or that, and so much depending on how how people are, which exam you're writing, right? Yeah. So maybe one guy wrote another exam than you, and he's getting really good grades, and the average like of all the people who wrote this exam is much, much better than the exam you wrote because your exam was much harder. Yeah. Then uh, are they smarter or, or not? Right. You can't say that, but still the average of your study is one of the main things companies look at when they hire you. So what actually separates people in reality? Sorry? So what actually separates people in reality? Let's say there's two guys that both have A's or whatever it might be, like what actually makes one a better employee or employer than another guy you know what does it come down to there's so i think there's so many things right i mean there's there's so many things starting from from the experience you have on a personal side and of course on a professional side so there's always these the let's say the the knowledge you create like the professional knowledge just knowing how to do things and this one is just about like let's say working in an industry for 10 years you're gonna get that knowledge if, if you're not completely stupid, you're going to have a certain knowledge after a certain time. And then, but then there's... But what about those people that are in the same business? Like, let's say they're even in the same company. They've both been there for 10 years, but one is like really dominating and the other guy's like, almost like if he's on day one, you know? Yeah. What separated yeah. those two people? I think it's most mostly working with, with other employees, um, being, just being, being able to... To, uh, or sh first of all, showing an, an, a different attitude on, on how to tackle problems, um, different attitude on how to work with people, different, uh, there's, I think there's a lot of factors, but I, I believe those are the, the main things, like especially so, like your character, like what kind yeah. of guy are you? Um, ambition always plays a role for sure. Um, Isn't ambition sort of like curiosity? Like you're also, curious to see what your ne what you can do, like what's actually possible. Yeah, definitely. I mean, cur curiosity. I think especially when you work is a big part, right? I mean, you can be there and just try to do your job without doing anything left and right, and it, it might work fine for you. Or you are the guy who also looks left and right and maybe reads a book on a topic, and then eventually you'll end up just being superior to the guy because you have more more information. You can put different different problems or different the situation in a much wider context than, than other people can. Yeah. And with what you're saying about like the sort of the bullshit, you know, like how you're like, you failed one exam and then two months later you got the best grade. When you said that, I was almost thinking like sort of like how the stock market is, right? Like one day it's doing good next day because some news is 10% down or it's 5% down or it's 20% up. And it's like, nothing really changed with that company, you know, like very rarely, but ah, there's some news that there's some whatever trade disagreement and nothing even materialized, but the percentage changed, you know, like the value changed just because of that piece of information, that sentence that came out, even if it's true or not true. And um, I don't know, I just sort of feel like that with like the stock market, right? And then everything's sort of going to hell and the stock market's rising in a way, you know what I'm saying? Like for right now in the world. So it's sort of like artificial. It's like, how do you know what to trust? How do you know what not to trust? But um, that's a whole nother conversation in the end. 
though to bring it back, let's say full circle, now you finish the university, now you're working on some project, you're, you're being a coach, you're still a coach. No, actually, actually I, I stopped coach or like I, I let basically I let the coaching business kind of run run out once uh, once I started to study and once I finished my uh, sports science study and once uh, once I started the business studies. Yes, yeah. especially for those reasons that I saw I, I saw no real opportunity or that I didn't see myself doing this for the rest of my life and I'm yeah. There there were also like also honestly there was not enough opportunity to actually. Uh, live from it so um for me it was in the end was a decision okay it, it, it's fun you can make some money on the side but i did i did not want to put another extra effort in it to to keep it running and maybe take the next step um that's why i just uh, decided to let it run out um so actually just a couple months ago i i sold the coach boat and the charter boats i have so right now basically it's i have no boats kind of finished so if 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 I get I I get some requests through the website uh, every every now and then, and um, so if then I tell them the the things that where I where I would be willing to to do it, and if they if they say they're okay with it, then then we set something up. Uh, but if not, then I don't put any extra effort in it. So so actually this year I haven't done any coaching at all. But also because I'm I don't, another thing is I'm, I've been busy with the other sailing project, and last year I did like I don't know three gigs or something like that it's not nothing nothing significant like yeah exactly so this uh, what i'm doing now is actually i i work for a startup where they um created a software for companies uh to improve their professional service procurement so where they actually um have a solution or created a solution for big companies if they have a project and they're looking for the right service provider they specify their needs. They are then matched through our database, um, possible possible professional service providers. They can choose from that, um, and then invite them to the to the whole process. Compare quotes and eventually award the um, award the project to them, which which makes the whole the whole process, which back which still is quite uh, complicated in some companies. Um, yeah compliant and, and a lot easier and a lot more, let's say, uh, structured in a way again, like, like to structuring something like that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm working for them now. I will be working there at least until the end of the year. I signed a contract until the end of the year, but I will also be applying for, for other jobs just to see what other opportunities are out there. Sure. And uh, then, All in Europe or outside Europe? All in Europe, uh, looking, especially in Germany now. Uh, and, then, and then see what, just compare options, right? for now it's just trying to trying to get uh, a few options on the table and then see see what will work or what will not work for me and what about the sailing project the team you're on then well the, the sailing project and this is an interesting one i've been part of this the sailing project for i think three years now um and i started that uh i, I got was asked by by a guy i knew from from back in the day to join it and I, I came there and I, I didn't have much um, much knowledge about big boat sailing basically not yeah zero I always was sailing dinghies so it, and it's it is quite different there's a lot there's many different things that that you need to know it's a lot more tech even more technical um, and just need to need need to know your way around and I when I first joined the team I was doing really bad basically <laughs> So doing a lot of mistakes, just just also not knowing what, how things work. Um, still, they liked the attitude in the end, and uh, um, so they gave me the opportunity to uh, to stay on the team and, and basically learn. Um, and that's what I did for the past two years. However, this this whole team went nowhere. Um, so they they were running this team. The guy who ran the team, uh, we we didn't do any any good results, and we were always staying on the same point, always in the back of the fleet. We had no chance basically so there was no yeah. no progress at all and um eventually i i started to take more responsibility and also spent quite a lot of uh time um for the project i was doing boat captain so so that means you're responsible about all the things with the boat um all the spare parts if something's damaged you're you're in charge and the boat is in a good state 
um, and which took quite a lot of um, a lot of time and we are not paid paid for this project it's a it's a project where our sponsor gives the opportunity for for this team to sail in a in a professional environment it's a professional class a lot of professional teams out there um, and says I will reimburse you for all your costs but you're not getting paid so what does um, that mean like you get your place to stay your food the spare parts I, or not? you're not gonna spend one year on from from the time you leave your house to the time you come back to your house gotcha. um, exactly and then then this project was not going anywhere and i i was feeling i i don't want to spend this extra so much time for a project which is not where we are not improving and where we are kind of only laughed at by the professional teams right and yeah because by the the setup this project had we were well funded we have a good boat um th there were so many opportunities um so i was talking to the sponsor and we were talking about uh, i was just saying that i am i will not be um be joining the year uh, the the upcoming year if if it's still under this kind of management because there were just many things going wrong yeah. and uh then he he also thought this way because he spent a lot of money and project didn't go anywhere what's the benefit for this guy like what is his background who has this boat or is a sponsor actually the, the, the actually actually to be 100 percent honest i don't think he has a huge benefit he has a huge uh he has a big industry uh, company so he, yeah. what he does is he's doing all like the back walls of Ikea um, cupboards and stuff. So he's doing um, like Ikea cupboards, like uh, Ikea, like the, the drawers and stuff like the desks, drawers, oh, all okay. this, this kind of stuff. So he's doing like wooden, uh, wooden planks with, I think up until 1.5 centimeter of thickness. Um, so the huge company, I think, 1500 employees uh big one and he has his own professional team where he races in the series and said he would like to give also a, a, a youth team and he races himself he's a sailor yeah he races himself oh. um but the benefit he has and i talked to him like what what what's your goal with this he's like the way i see it is i want to give you guys the opportunity yeah. um and i want to see that that things are running well that you're going somewhere and he sees it like a, like running a small company. So he says next, apart from the whole opportunity sailing wise, he wants to give, or he thinks it's a great, um, it's a great opportunity for, for young people to, to work as a team and to define different roles because he thinks this is, and it's kind of true. This whole uh, thing is like running a, a small company and it is honestly, honestly it is. Yeah. So then, then they offered me to take over the team and um, I, I agreed. So I took over the team last year after the season. And the uh, first thing I did was basically um, completely restructure the team. So we, I was with some guys, I decided not to keep working. Uh, we actually, I only kept one guy um, that I wanted to keep working with. From the original team of how many people? The team. Uh, it's eight people, the team. So eight plus you or eight with you? Oh, it's eight, eight, eight in total. And then of course you have a bigger pool because it's, it's such a big time, uh, time uh, investment that not always the eight people can go for all the events. So you need some replacements also. Um, so we, we started completely from zero, com set up the whole team uh, completely new. Um, and now this year we're doing, we're basically one of the top teams. Within half a year, even the Corona situation, we are, um, yeah, we, we established ourselves on the top of the feet and everybody's like, what happened here? Right? Well, um, everyone's new. <laughs> no, no. I mean the other teams, right? And yeah, no, I know, but it's like, that's what, uh, that's what happened. It's not the same guys anymore. <laughs> exactly. It's not the same guys, but also the way, the way the whole project is run is very differently. The, the old manager was doing, um, uh, was always spending a lot of money for accommodation, for food. Everybody went out for food and then we he always claimed that we don't have money to buy better sales buy better material to actually compete on a high level so i think there the priorities were just set wrong and also yeah, sure. the the guys you know when you let's say when you give to, or when you give to the whole team um when you say oh you can go out to eat every day they're just gonna be in this comfortable place not exactly they're just he's just they're, like living large in a way exactly. like he wasn't and, getting paid but he was just living good life nice hotels yeah. nice food and and they don't do it for 
for competing well they do because it's nice because you can go out for dinner nicely yes nice accommodation and it's it's all nice but we just don't go anywhere yeah. So we, we just completely reset the goals. We, we completely restructured the team. We, um, and and the, the result, the end result is overwhelming, to be honest. I, I would not have thought that we could be where we are now already in such a short time. Yeah. But this just shows, to be honest, what you can do just with getting the right people on board and setting different goals, right? I mean, there's yeah. not, the boat is still the same. We got a few different sales now that we also had the budget now to buy because we are now cooking ourselves. We're staying in, uh, we're staying in uh, um, cheaper accommodations. We are we are planning the flights better, so we spend save less money. on flights. We, spend, yeah. we save a lot of money on 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 things that are not important for for sailing well, right? And this project yeah. should be about making a making a good result. So we just completely re, re, restructured or reset the goals. And uh, even though we still change a lot the people because of the because of different uh, because they all don't have time so much time yeah. to put we are we are always or until now we were always able to show up with a very strong team to events um, and I, I mean I, I'm learning a lot about how to how to set everything up how to um, also deal with so many people we now have like a pool of let's say I think around 15 people um 15 characters right that, that also they all need to be happy and i think this is probably the most this is the toughest we are in the toughest situation to manage people because we're looking for for a profile a sailor who is can compete on an on a professional level but does not get paid and spends so much time basically puts in the effort but doesn't get much out of it so you it's very hard to create the leverage you cannot well, say he can well, get the he gets the personal the personal uh, fulfillment from it, you know, because on a prof exactly. if he was on a professional team, then maybe he wouldn't be able to live where he lives. He wouldn't be able to do what he does. Like he'd have to change his life completely. But here, he can maybe integrate his current lifestyle plus or minus. Yeah, but but some of these guys, the goal for them is to become a professional sailor. Like that's ah, okay, okay. what is wrong, right? I mean, some of the guys they would like to get paid for sailing. Because sure. they want to, they're living with that. When they win these events, is there prize money or is it just like a? Prize money. No. So what? Like it where would it go to from take here? Part on one... Sorry. Like so, the only way for them to start making money is to get into a team that pays or to. To get paid. Yeah. You get yeah, paid. Just some other way, sponsors. Yeah, get exactly. Rolex. Get Rolex on the sale. Yeah, whatever. But this is, I think, this is the hard part. You don't have any. You don't have any leverage. And if the people yeah. are like. They are not happy, or they they don't feel valued, or whatever. They're gonna say, "Well, fuck you, man. I'm not coming." So, how do you build that leverage for them? How did you do it? I think the the way that what we really, or what what is one of the main parts this year that that we did really well is um, that we created a really good atmosphere. Like people, they just enjoy go coming there because we are very ambitious. We are all working towards a goal and we're having on the on land we're having a good time everybody gets along with each other well um everybody's having his own tasks so it's very well again back to the structure really very well organized it is yeah. everybody has his responsibilities responsibilities that he needs to do um so we come back to that right creating uh, creating a, a good structure and then also i'm you you read the book principles right yeah. so what 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 we did was when when setting up this team we this was one of the first things we did we we defined the, the principles for the team so how do we want to act with one another how what are deadlines to answer to emails whatsapps yeah. things like that right so we de, we we define i think now we have like 11 principles or 12 principles um that everybody agreed on and and that just shows there's there's clear you know there's very clear communication everybody knows what what do you remind do you remind people of the principles like every every session you guys go out like you're sort of reading them out or how did that sort of no out? actually actually not even because are they written down right somewhere? now we don't have to they are written down we have a, a dropbox with all the all the information and they, they are also placed there they are written down um but we don't have to because they they are valued right now so can you read no can you read me like uh three principles if you have that document Let's open. See. I just need to also have to go to and that. so you think like misallocation of resources in the end is what sort of like can lead to problems 
in a way. It's mis it's misallocation of resources and um, not having responsibilities right, not uh, managing your your people right, not managing expectations of sailors, not um, being clear in the communication. I think this is a very big one: being clear so that everybody knows what's happening. That there's clear guidelines, clear rules, um, because then if if some things are not um, are not done by the people, you're gonna discuss with them, right? So yeah, I discuss, and then they're gonna say, "No, I see differently." Blah blah. blah. Like this, you define clear rules. If they if they fuck up, they fuck up. Um, and I think what you're bathroom. saying. Okay. You're what? Bathroom, bathroom. Jesus. Right. You want to hear the principles? Let's see. And uh, what I was gonna say is like um, one thing that I think that is a benefit to the team, even though they're not getting paid in cash, is they are learning like discipline in a way, right? And I think that's a valuable thing. Like sometimes everyone's looking for that monetary return, but sometimes like a lot of things that you might learn and benefit from, sometimes you don't get paid for. You know, like I, I think right now the main the main thing that that keeps people or that makes people interested in this project is first of all that we're doing results, that we're delivering results, that we are sure. performing well in a class that is that is very respected and quite quite uh, quite known on a professional level. So you, they people see that things are working well, and like we come back to the point that I mentioned before: if you have success, it's fun. It's fun to be. We are an, in in theory, we are an amateur team. It's fun to be an amateur team and beat professional teams mm -hmm. because you take you take away from them everything they stand for. Yeah. They get paid so those those guys get paid a thousand euros a day. We don't get paid yeah. nothing. We beat them. This is fun. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you. This is this is really fun. And the second the second thing is they they see that it's just a great atmosphere. It's a great, great group of guys. You know, so mm -hmm. People enjoy going there to meet all these guys and then delivering a good result, performing on a high level. Of course, who, who, who would not want that? Yeah. Right? And I think this is right now, this is the edge we have. Once we, let's say if, if we didn't do good results, I think it would be a lot harder. Yeah. But maybe still possible with, with some other, with managing expectations and maybe if we have small improvements on it, it could be possible. But the situation we are in right now with, a great group of guys, a great atmosphere, having a lot of fun and being successful. This is what everybody wants to be part of. And why, like what ranking are you guys? Like, is there a way to put the ranking? Well, right now I think there's, due, due to Corona, we, uh, everything got postponed to the end, right? So we had um, two regattas of the, they, they call it the World League, which is kind of a series. And at the end of the year, depending on who did the best result in, in total, mm -hmm they win. Um, there were two regattas. We finished fourth in one and third in the, in the other one. So I think we are in third place now. Out of how many people? I think uh, 12 or 13. Last, last event was only 10 because of COVID because then travel restrictions again and so on. How many, how many teams on there are getting paid? Out of the 12 teams? Yeah. Nine teams were officially professional, so everybody there gets paid. Yeah, yeah. And even the teams that are amateur, I think one team of the amateur team also there are some guys, some guys who get paid. Not all of them, but some yeah. guys get paid. And I'm guessing the goals get first. The goals to get first, and then we had the world championship, right? And we finished uh, also on the podium in the world championship, finished third. Good. So, so that was um, that was that. So to come back to the team principles, I have them open now. So number one principle is called speak up, be open. If there's something that bothers you or something you believe we should discuss, always speak up to the team or the responsible person directly. Be open but respectful about the things you believe are not going well. This is number one rule. 
Number two rule, deliver the best result you can at whatever you need to do. No matter if it is about performing on your highest possible level on the race course, or if it means polishing the boat or cleaning up the van, always strive for excellence. Third one, first finish your task, then help others. Always make sure that your own tasks are finished before you start to dig into helping others. Once you finish your task, check if any other team member needs a hand with something. So that makes sure we, that makes sure that you are, you're you responsible for something. You do what, to, what you're supposed to do, right? Yeah. It sounds weird at the beginning. It's like, don't help others, finish your task. But in the end, if you are running a team like this, maybe you're in the middle of something and a guy asks you, oh, can you help me with that? If you drop everything there and go help him, yeah. you're not gonna go anywhere. So there's eight people in the team, just ask somebody else, right? And that's sort of going back to that one, sort of like a rule that they say is like, if in what, with what they say on planes, right? It's like, um, in case of an emergency, make sure you secure your mask first before helping others. There you go. Because if you start helping others before you make sure you're okay, then you might put everyone else in jeopardy. Like you won't be as effective anymore. So yeah, that's no, good. Those are some good principles. Those are, those are three of them we have. I just see we have 12 principles right now. That's good. And how do you guys add, or I'm guessing you're not subtracting, but how do you add? Um, I, the 12th principle is actually add and change principles. And it's called, uh, in case you feel the need to add another principle, you can speak up about your idea in front of the team and the team will decide about adding it or not. Similarly, in case you feel like some of the principles are not working well, the same process applies. So far we have added. Oh, okay. So everyone just complying for now. For now, yeah. There's no rebellions, no rebellions in there. So far, no. So far, no. So, so wrap that up. So tell me about that project then. Like, so what are you, so what are your final thoughts about it? Well, the, the thoughts are, it's, it's been a great learning experience for me, but it's also been a, a lot of effort because I've been in this year, I've been doing literally everything from, from uh, managing all logistics, the budget, taking care of the boat, literally everything. So it has been like a part-time job. Yeah. Um, the next step now, the next step now is to, to spread the word right now we know we have a good team i know there are some some really good people on the team that that also are able to to take certain responsibilities so the next step now for for next year also with the background of me probably working full time and not having the time anymore to to put that much effort in is to set up the team in a way that that we still that it still works even if i'm not there so what what will happen now is um, after the season, we will define, there will be different job tasks, uh, defined. It's like in a, in a business, right? You, you yeah. define, you need a store manager, you define what the store manager has to do and you say, you're the store manager now, your responsibilities do it. So I will split up all the tasks that I, I did this year in, into different jobs and, um, then, uh, divided on, on, on more heads. So everybody is responsible. Some people are responsible for, for, for various things. And then, um, I, first of all, don't have to do that much anymore. And also uh, we do not run into the, um, into the danger of if, and that could be the case, if I'm too busy working, this whole the thing will get done. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ah, the, the, the project is stopped because nobody knows what to do. I don't have even time to tell the guys what to do, what, you know, it's, it's, it's done. So <laughs> yeah, cause it's quicker if you just do it yourself. No way. Yeah. Th this is most, then this is, a, this is the thing. So now we're, I want to be one step ahead of that. I want to be prepared for the, for this case. Right. So this, this, this will be the, this will be the way we go uh, for the next year. Also, we, we, regarding team management, we, we will need to set, check how we set up the team. I would like to have, every position on the boat uh i would like to have two people ready for that uh to be able to to jump in so it would be 16 people in total so uh, right now we have um we have a decent pool of guys but we're still looking for some um some other ones we made a, a small campaign on instagram where people can actually apply to our team they have to send cvs via email it's actually like they, they send proper cvs um why they want to join the team what the experience are and so on and then we will decide at the end of the year, screening all the, all the CVs, who could possibly help us or maybe even proactively, if we really want some guys in the team, uh, go to them and talk to them and try to convince them to join us for next year. So those, those, are, the next, those are the next steps.
And so that's the next step in that project. What is the next step, next steps in your life project? Next step right now, and this is the, the main one is the job, right? It's uh, looking for looking for a job. Like I said before, checking options now uh, and seeing where my where my professional life will, will move to. And where do you want it to go? That's a good question, Charles. It's a it's a it's a good question. Very tough to answer. Um, yeah. Because you know there there's a fine line. There's many things that I would like to do. I would like to keep be able to to keep doing projects like projects like this in sailing because as i mentioned before since i'm i'm 12 years old i've been traveling for sailing and i i don't know i don't know a life without being involved in a certain with a certain amount of time in sailing I mean it be on a professional level coaching earning my money with it or yeah. uh, sailing myself right so so this this would be this would it would be one this would be like my ideal situation is where i find a job uh, that will um, help me progress in my professional career, but at the same time will give me enough freedom to keep doing the sailing. And I think this is the very tough part. <laughs> because and what does the professional career lead to in it, in the end? Like, what is what is the because also you said like ah some things don't give me enough money, some things give me you know like so is do you have like a number in your head where you're like I need to be earning like or I ideally want to be earning this much money to then be setting aside this much money to oh. then have a pension because I'm planning to have uh, a, a kid that's going to have a private school that's going to cost this much and yada, yada, yada. Or is it like off of a feeling? Like, is there, do you actually have like a structure behind that part or is it all like a feeling wise? On the money side, I'm, I don't, I'm not the guy who needs to have a lot of money. I just want, uh, I'm the guy who wants to get um, paid accordingly to what I, to what I deliver. So let's say you get a job where you have a lot of responsibilities, where you put in a lot of effort you need to get paid accordingly. So it, it, there's no, there's no long time, long time plan that I want to earn this much money in my whole, in my whole career that I want to build a house, whatever. For me, it's fine. It, I'm, honest, I'm honestly telling you that for me, it's fine to, to, to stay in a solid apartment and, um, and, and do whatever I, 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 I want to do right so to to be able to go let's say to the Dominican Republic once a year those are the things that I would like to I would like to but you don't need that much money for that it's not yeah. about being a millionaire uh, I rather I rather see it's it's much more important that you feel like you are actually creating value in the job you do and that you're not just like a part of like a, a small part in a huge in a, in a huge machine right you need to for me, it's very important that I that I see that I create value and that I um, am able to to make a difference. And then, in the end, I think those those two things come together, right? You you do a good job, you you actually make a difference in in a company. You you most of the time you'll get reimbursed for that. And do you like how long do you think you're gonna live till? Sorry. Like how long do you think you're gonna live till? Like, are you going to live to like 80 years old or a hundred years old? I've never thought about that. And this is something that I don't really care about also. I could die tomorrow. Honestly, I'm, I, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm honest about it. Like there's other, there's people who are like, Oh, what if I die tomorrow? For me, I don't, I don't really care because oh, I'm just so thinking far, I'm the reason why I'm, I'm yeah, no, yeah, I get you. Like you're so far, you're happy. You're everything's going sort of pretty much as, as you wish yeah, it to go. But um, I'm just thinking because, like, let's say you you have this game plan of like you know working, bringing value, etc. I'm like, where is it sort of going? Like, is this going to be a, a a plan that's going to apply when you're 50, when you're 75, when you're 100? I think also also there, Charles. I mean, now I'm 26, and I mean, I'm always talking about the perspective of the 26 year old. That's that's what you have to say. Also, the, all the all the things yeah. before you you're talking about with the experience I have to date, um, where you're 26 years old, which means you're still fucking young and you didn't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you saw a lot. You saw a lot more honest. than a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, but to but be still, honest, I know, I know. So you talk to a 50 year old guy, man. This guy has 24 years more experience. Man, I was two years old back then. <laughs> but also, <laughs> imagine, imagine, yeah, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So yeah. so by by now. Trying to, or if I would answer your question about 
uh, what happens when I'm 50 years old, I would answer it out of the perspective of a 26 year old yeah. trying to think about my purposes and about my goals when I'm a 50 year old and then answer them. However, those continuously change. So if I'm 50 year old, I might be thinking completely differently. Yeah. And what I'm, what I'm thinking about right now. No, and that's so why I, I'm saying as a thought experiment, it's sort of a good thought experiment because it helps put you into that, into this hypothetical of like, wait a minute, if I go how I'm going now, where am I going to end up? I don't think so. Because you're, you are, again, you're talking about the perspective that will be way differently than when you're 50 years old. I, think I, I know, I know, you always, but you can you maybe, always, you always should, you, sh you always should be like, I'm 26 now. What do I want to do now? Not what, what, what do I, how, how do I think what are going to be my decisions when I'm 50 years old? Right. So how far so right are now you thinking my, ahead? Right, right now, right now I'm an ambitious guy still. I'm a young guy. I'm ready to, to <laughs> tackle the world. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and already that you, you see it like, Three years, three years earlier, I would have thought that by like that, that it's much that that you're always gonna be achieving something very big. Already now, you start working a little bit, and you feel like maybe this is not gonna happen. So already, but why? Okay, so already, that's a good point. So I'm you're saying you're you're lowering the standard a little bit, so, or so reality? Already, yeah, it's like that. So already there, your your thoughts change. So right now, I'm 26. I say, okay, I want yeah. to try to my goals is like I said before for now for the next years I would like to keep uh, making experience in sailing would be still connected to the sailing world but also on the on the other hand try to gain as much experience in in, uh, in my professional career yeah. um, possible right now it's still about getting experience I mean I, gotcha. right now I my, my main goal is not making money the eventually you'll be working for you you probably have worked for 10 15 years and then you, you have so much knowledge or so much experiences that then, like I said before, I don't know it now, but most likely your goals are going to change. Maybe you have a family, maybe then, then your goals are going to change because you have to provide for your family because you yeah. have a lot more stuff like this. But I don't know that now. I don't know if I'm going to have a family next year. Who knows? Maybe I'm going to have a family. <laughs> maybe I'm, maybe I can't even get kids. So I'm never going to get a family. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who I knows? haven't checked. Sure. Oh, you gotta go. Yeah, checked. you gotta go check. So, <laughs> what 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 can I say now about forty, fifty? Maybe I I start getting a family when I'm fifty, getting myself a hottest girlfriend, twenty years old. Boom. <laughs> what am I gonna do? I don't yeah, know. The, your your future wife is not even born yet. Maybe. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a good point, Charles. This is a, this is a great point. Yeah, she's not even born yet. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's just like uh, you know, it's and it's good that you. What I from what I see, right? Because we're also the same age. Is that I think it's fine that we don't have the exact answer, but I think it's already good that we're questioning, that we're asking those questions because there's a lot of people, sort of like what we we're talking before, that they're just drifting. And they don't ever ask these questions. And then one day they wake up because for me, imagine, doesn't Cabrera for you when you're, doesn't that feel like it happened a year ago or six months ago? Yeah, sure. When you look back on it, it almost looks like it happened. Like you just got off the flight five days ago, you know, like the memories are still clear. So you Bro, see that. One, there's one memory in my head. <laughs> it's just like it was yesterday. I'm still mad about that one. <laughs> <laughs> So with, with like, you know how things just feel, time flies. And even though this was six years ago, it feels like yesterday. And um, people sometimes, they don't, they don't think about that. They don't just see that the things are going. And even though it might feel the same, it's actually a little bit different because when you're looking for, let's say, a work or you're looking to progress or make a deal, you might feel like that 20-year-old guy but on the paper, you're that, you're that 35 year old, you know? Sure. So it's like those things, people, sometimes they don't consider that, that like, even though you feel the same, how people see you will be different. Yes, of course. Yeah. And that could uh, affect you. And just like, um, 
just like anything, if you don't plan accordingly, like failing, to, uh, planning or failing to plan is planning to fail. That's what they say. And even another thing that you're saying with the short-term pleasures uh, and the long-term, it's like short-term pleasures lead to long-term pain. That's another one that they say. And how do you see that? Like, do you see yourself, like, how's your balance on that? Like, how much short-term pleasures do you have compared to long-term pains that you're living through? I think it's, it, it changes from time to time. I think there is, but I think, and I think it's good like that. I believe there's always going to be, there's always times that, that you have to put the effort in and where you might not, where you might go hold back on a short-term pleasures to achieve a certain, certain goal. Yeah. And then there will be times where you're just also going to be, be happy where the things are or where you are at this, at this moment. And then it's also fine that you're just take it easy for one or two years, because I think that's also important for yourself of not always needing to be on top of always because it creates a lot of pressure on yourself. So there also have to be some times where you're like, okay, take a breath, yeah. maybe regroup and also go a little bit more on, on, onto this path. However, I mean, you're probably going to be the same. If I do that for a year after that, I'm bored. I'm bored. Maybe even, yeah. maybe even way earlier because yeah. I, I'm not going. Two days. Two days I'm already bored. I'm like, oh, this is nice the first day. And then the second day I'm like, Jesus, let's get back to it. There you go. So I think there, there's times where, where you go, where you just shift your, pri or you, you, you shift your priorities from time to time. Yeah. So I make, a, make, a, I make an example. Now I think it's, you start a professional career. I feel yeah. like now for the next next two three years it might be quite hard, and it might you might go put other things uh, to the back just to achieve a certain standing in 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 the professional world. Yeah. However, then after you maybe had two or three hard years, then you might arrive at a step where you, you first of all take a breath, right? Where you can also where you also are in a position where you can take a breath because you are more respected. People know what you're able to do. And, and so on, right? So there's, I think it shifts from time to time. Uh, and I, but to answer your question, I think now at this current, uh, at this current state, I feel like this is going to be uh, less short time pleasures, short term pleasures and uh, just pushing forward right now. And do you think knowing, like knowing that in your head where you're like uh, two, three years, you know, is there any way to condense that? And should you even try to condense that? I mean, I think it all depends on the situation. Um, how could maybe you do so well after one year? You're there, you're at a point where you're, where you thought you would be in two or three years, maybe. In the end, I, but I, I also think it, this is not, if, if you show a certain attitude, this, this question doesn't really matter. Because if you approach things with an attitude where you always want to perform it at, at your best or on a high level, on your highest level, yeah. then what do I know if it takes two or three years, maybe it takes one year. Now I'm thinking it takes two or three years. You perform at your highest level, if two or three years are not enough, okay, you do another one. Yeah. What, you know, it's not like, you, you only know it once, once you have the opportunity. Like the best example is this. I, I worked my ass off in, in the youth. I, I, I didn't have a lot of short-term pleasures like going out with friends, going to parties because I was always either sailing or working out. Yeah. Then with 18, I fly to the Dominican Republic. I have two years of short-term pleasures. <laughs> some, yeah. some shorter than I would like, I would like them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, for, for sure, it's like that. Then you come back, come back to Germany, it sucks, you go study, maybe you don't like it that much, but you get things going. You, there's also some times again, all right, where you, 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 you just do the trade-off. Do a trade-off. I, think this no, no, I, I guess it's I guess it's good if you're at least aware of it because sometimes I just feel that a lot of people trade off too much time and then when it's then it's too late to look back you know like then they developed all the bad habits they developed the the like they can't it's hard to rebuild the discipline you know because it goes like a complete 180 or complete 360 whatever you want to call it um, from going from doing nothing to now having to do something. Well, it's, it's never going to be that you do nothing. It's just that you switch your priorities a little bit. Let's, let's call it in, for a job. Yeah, you, you receive a certain, let's say you receive a certain promotion yeah. and you're just now able to maybe take the Friday afternoon off 
then you take the Friday afternoon off. Whilst before, you were not in a position to do that because you had to prove yourself because you had to make yourself uh, known. Then you're not going to say, I'm taking the Friday afternoon off. If you do that, okay, do it, but it'll slow you down a lot. Gonna reach it. it slows you down a lot. Yeah. You know, so it always depends on, on, on where you are. So to, to maybe like wrap this up, I think there's like two things that are, let's say two things that I think could be interesting just to, to finish it up, which sort of link back to what we were talking about this whole time is, so now what are you spending your time on? How is your, how's your day to day looking? Yeah. How do you keep yourself going? Cause you live by yourself. Everything's by yourself. You pay your own bills. So how do you, how do you keep yourself going? Well, like I said, I started, I signed a contract now for a full-time job in the startup. So this keeps me busy during the week. It's a 40, 40 hour week. So you yeah. get up, you go to work at eight then uh, you finish um, at five, 5 PM because it's in an office or it's on the computer or just from home. Well, right now it's home office. So I go, I just, I'm at home. About the like where you're sitting, just where I'm sitting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, um, um, eventually, and this is this is the deal. I most likely will get my office or a space in a in a um, shared office. Uh, that should be a lot in, cheaper too now. <laughs> one or two <laughs> in one or two weeks, which I also like a lot because then your day gets more structured and it's much better. I I don't like too much working from home. Yeah. Because especially I'm living in a one room apartment, you go up from your bed and my desk is literally one meter away. So the as a studio, what you're in, or is it separated studio. or only the bathroom is separated? It's a studio. Only the bathroom is separated. Gotcha. So, so you, you spend the whole fucking day within <laughs> five square meters. No uh, yeah. joke. You're laughing. No joke. <laughs> and that's not, that's not too much fun. So yeah. I'm actually looking forward to, okay, maybe have an, uh, a place in an office, go there at, at eight. You know, you have yeah. your, your clear, again, we come back to a structure, you have your clear structure, you go back at five, that's it. Are you um, still working out and things like this? Yeah, sure. Uh, like now on, on, the, on the weekends, I try to do as much cycling as possible because I, that I'm literally hooked on that right now. So I, I try to, do, uh, to, do, to go cycling. Um, yeah. This is what, I mean, takes a lot of time, right? Today we, we started at 10 a.m. We came back like at, at 2.30. It's four and a half hours. After that, 100 kilometers, you're like, also you're kind of dead. So, so uh, you're done for the day. You do some small things maybe on the computer. I do the interview with you now. Then I'll do some cooking and then go to bed, start, start working again tomorrow at 8. Um, yeah. during, the, during the week, I, I try to work out in the gym like, I used to work out a lot more, but now I still need to get back into the routine. Uh, but I try to go to the gym like at least two times a week and you do some cycling and then, uh, then you're good, right? And with your health background, like, or, wait, but before that, uh, are you reading? You're reading still, are you studying? Like you're like watching things maybe that are productive or is it more like not that I try much? to read also, also with my reading, it's, it's up and down. Um, so there's times where I really can motivate myself to read and then i i read like i don't know one or two books per week and then there will be times again where for one or two months i don't read any book i i still have a pile of books there that i that i need to read um actually right now where is it, is it here? No. actually i right now i read it back there near the uh, bicycle oh no, that, that's another one I, I finished that one actually already uh it's here actually right now i i read the cow this is this one i finished it's a like, it's an interesting one. It's called Crucial Conversations. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah tools for talking uh, things are high. And right now I read uh, The Culture Code. This is actually really yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm like, I don't know, 40 pages in or something. Like that. I'll, give you, I'll give you one book that I'm reading right now that I have been applying and you probably have been applying as well, but I think this helps solidify it and you're going to laugh when you see it. But I think it's like, I actually think that this is probably a key book for anyone that is planning to, that is into developing themselves, let's say, right? You ready? I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm ready, but hit me. How to read a book. Key. Yeah, I imagine. And... 
this is the thing, you know, it sort of goes back to being effective, right? Like you don't want to be part of a team and it not going anywhere, or you don't want to be following some training regime or doing some sort of efforts like, ha, huh, let me go to the gym one hour a day. But you know this for sure. People go to the, they go to the gym one hour a day, 30 minutes a day, three hours a day and nothing. And then you see a guy who walks in for 25 minutes, walks out. Maybe you see him three times a week, whatever it is. And then he's actually progressing. Right. And it's sort of like that. Like a lot of people might read a lot of books. They might uh, watch a lot of content that might be educational because you can watch your content or you can listen to audiobooks, but then like they just read it. You know, they don't even understand it. They don't even like put it to use. And this has been a very good book to, helps a little, like, there's a lot of things, you know, I, I already write in my books, I underline, I take notes, you know, I think about what the, what the author's actually trying to say, um, but there's a couple steps that you can go even deeper, and uh, I think it's just good, because if you're going to read a book, it's not only about reading it fast, it's not only about, yeah, well, reading it, that's what a lot of people measure, like, oh, I read 100 books this year, but it's like, tell me what you learned on book 52, and they don't know or there's no concept, there's no nothing, right? And that's the whole thing, it's like, and even that, some books are not even meant to be, like, shouldn't even be, you shouldn't be reading every book the same, sort of like with your, with your training, it's like not every training is the same. And some books deserve a more in-depth uh, analysis and some books just a surface reading. So it's very interesting, and this teaches you how to read all types of, um, teaches you how to read in general, and then also how to read specific content, right? Because reading a poem is different than reading a business book. Sure. So I don't know. And I just came, it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. And I was like, you know what? Like if we're reading so many books and we're gonna, not going to stop reading ever, most likely, right? Like I'm like, we're 20, we're 26, right? So we're most likely going to be reading more books. So sort of like if you're training in the gym, you might as well learn how to train properly. Sure, sure. And if you're going to be eating your whole life, maybe you should also learn how to eat properly. And so it's just that sort of like going deeper into it. And um, yeah, so that's good. I took a note of, I have, I believe, I've heard of both of those books. I don't know if I have uh, Crucial Conversations, but um, Culture Code I've also heard of. And um and that's another thing that I realized too with reading books is that if you only read bestsellers, like you're sort of not going deep into certain things. This is not from the book I'm reading right now, but just like, you know how some people are just like watching things like, hey, have you seen that? And then you realize like, oh, that's the thing that Netflix is promoting to you. You know, hey, have you read this book? And then you realize, oh, that's the book that Amazon is re re recommending to everyone. I mean, the, the, the work starts with choosing a book. I mean, sometimes I'm just browsing on Amazon. And, yeah. I, you know, like now I have actually a big pile of books that I still need to read. So I'm, I'm set for a while, yeah. but then once last time I was done, I had like only one or two books left. I'm, I'm just going on Amazon and then I'm looking and I'm reading the descriptions and I'm, I'm reading the, um, the things other people say about the book and, and then I'll see if it sounds interesting to me, I'll buy it. Doesn't matter. That's almost even hard though to trust nowadays with like how people are rigging, I mean, I've, uh, I've had books that I've had books that I didn't really like either. You know, there was like this. There's this one book. I'm not sure if you if you read this one. This one I thought was was not very good. The McKinsey Edge. No, nah, but I'm guessing that's with the consulting firm. Yeah, and McKinsey exactly. It's with the McKinsey consulting firm, and there he just wrote like he wrote about a couple of principles like taking notes. Like you should take notes. This was basically his his thing. You should take notes, and you should take short notes. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, but that's a good tip right there. But then again, yeah. that could have maybe been said in 50 pages effectively you know, probably, and not in 200. There's other, there's other things he, he says, right? But I, I, for me, it was not that interesting. But maybe also for, another, for other people who maybe have not read books Anything, yeah. uh, before, it might, for them, it might be life changing. For me, it was like, okay, yeah. This is more or less, I've, I've heard many of these things before and I already do a lot of those things in or put a lot of those things into practice. Yeah. And, and uh, um, so, yeah, for me, it was whatever. But um, yeah, so again, there's there's books that some people would love on Amazon. They put five star ratings. So you buy it, you read it, you're like, nah, I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah. in the end, it doesn't hurt also. 
Like, it doesn't hurt me to have read this book. Just spend some time. That's the only, the only cost you put in. You know, you buy the book. Hey, but time's a valuable resource, man. Sure. Fine. Sure. sure. Though, all right. And then the, the finale is that, uh, so you're reading, you're, you're working out, you're, you're progressing yourself. And just to wrap that up, are you, for example, with yourself doing anything with like a, let's say, do you bounce off your ideas only with yourself or do you do that with someone else? Do you still keep in contact? Like, do you still have like, like a, a coach or are you your own coach? Right now I don't have a, a coach. No. I mean, in most of, if, if, if there's like a, let's say regarding business or a business idea, I think the sparring partner I would use would be my dad on this one. So yeah. I would just be in touch with him talking about that. There was like a two, two or three things that we had in mind that we already like, started getting into that, that that then in the end didn't work out because but it was not bad that they didn't work out just didn't work out yeah. so i think on on this side there um i would call say my dad is my sparring partner on that on, on other things you know it's also the guys i work you work with like the the founders of the startup you like you talk about some ideas they have some contacts in, in different areas too they also have their opinions um so depending on 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 where to go right on on what to do um with the team actually with the sailing team there's a lot of i try to talk a lot to the to all the people in the team and always there's different opinions you 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 listen to their opinions i don't always agree with the opinions i have my opinion um, but yeah. then you try to just set set everything into a context and then take decisions from there right i mean Sometimes five people tell me they would like to do it differently. I think, and me, I'm saying well, I would do it this way. But then, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Let's go. Let's go that way. But don't know. Has that ever happened yet? It has. Yeah, it definitely has. Especially, I mean, you, you're probably gonna laugh, but um, there was one, 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 or a few discussions that I had was regarding the the structure that was for for some of the guys. They said they they didn't feel comfortable to be on such a tight schedule of being like 10 a.m. being 10 a.m. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we, we had the discussion. I said, for me, I think it's, it's, very, uh, it's very important, but we can, we can try it in a different way. We can ease it a little bit, keep some structure, but, but ease it and, and see if, if everybody is doing his job. For me, it doesn't matter. You can show yeah. up five minutes later. If the job is done by the time where it has to be done, yeah. I'm happy about that. And so, so we, I adapted there. Um, and if you want them to show up at 7.50, at, at uh, 8 o'clock, just be like, hey, guys, no worries. Come 10 minutes late, but you, you have to show up at 7.50 now. <laughs> no, I, but it's, it's like that, right? Then, I mean, you have, I'm, I, you know that I'm, I'm a guy where I definitely have some strong opinions. And it, it, uh, yes. for me, sometimes it's, it's <laughs> definitely, uh, sometimes it's tough to, to try to, or to, let's say you take, take a different, take a different point of view, but, um, this is also something that, that, that I've learned or that I'm trying to improve to, to see everything. I call it the helicopter view, right? I mean, you get five opinions in the end, if you're the one who decides you need to, you need to think, okay, so you need to look at yourself. What is your decision? Is it actually, is it actually based on, on facts and is it actually true what you were thinking or yeah. is it like some, something that that you came up with and not really doesn't have much uh you know much much backing yeah with, uh, with other things it's just like an opinion you have mm -hmm. and i think there's a big difference some on some other things there might be that two or three guys come to you and they they have a different opinion but you know you have had this situation already 10 times in your life before and maybe they didn't and um then you tell them guys i i don't agree on that and you you still stick with your opinion um so I think it always is trying to, this is the important one, yeah, right? Trying to see it from a bird's eye view or helicopter perspective. And then, then also be honest to yourself that sometimes it can be or it can work better in a different way. And I think this is the hardest part, at least for me. <laughs> yeah. That's part of maybe the, uh, yeah, like... Because I was going to say, like, maybe that's a bit of, like, a German thing. You know, like, Germans are very, like, uh, they can be open in a lot of things, but then once they make their mind on some things, like, they stand very straight on that. You know, that's, like, something that I've noticed. So, like, they might be very open, but then on some things, like, it's different for everyone, right? It's not always the same thing. Like, when they have a, a decision made, it's, like, it's that or that. 
you know, there's nothing else. And then it could be like, that could like change the conversation or the atmosphere from one second to the other when there's that sort of conflict, you know, like there's some times where there's like a flexibility, but when I'm not gonna say when a German knows, but when a German thinks he knows what he knows, that's it. <laughs> no discussion. <laughs> and uh, very hard to shift that, uh, that thing. But I think that's maybe because of like the environment and the culture of the country or maybe some parts of it, you know? And, and also, uh, I mean, it, I think it's because it's the same with Latin American or Caribbean people. Everyone's very relaxed and no one gives a, a shit about anything. Very like, you know, it's very open and laid back. And then you have the Swiss that has their way of doing things and the Canadians and the Americans. So everyone has their own way of doing it. But um, I know that's stereotyping, but sometimes there's some truth behind stereotypes. Sometimes. Oh, definitely. Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, call it culture, call it a stereotype, whatever it is. Exactly. Culture is, in the end, a culture is a stereotype. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just how most of many people, a big group of people react. Or, that's good that you're working on yeah. that. That's called openness. You know, just like being open to hearing out other ideas and then sort of playing them out in your head and seeing if sure. it's a valid thing or not. Sure. I mean, it's, I think it's a very important one, but it's a very hard one. It's a very hard one. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, I believe, especially if you work, I mean, especially then, because this is where it applies. If you work with big teams, this is where, where it comes to. And then in the end, you know, you work with big teams. Every, everybody in the team needs to feel valued. And they don't feel valued if you just always tell them what to do. <laughs> but also they need to understand, they need to be open to the idea that maybe the guy who's leading them has more information than them and can make a better decision for them. And they just have to trust in it. It's the information and also the responsibility, right? In the end, yeah. if you're the leader, you're the, you're the responsible, you're responsible for, for the guys, for the team, and you're yeah. responsible for, for the actions that do the team. Because if something goes wrong, they're not going to go to any guy, anybody in the team and say, man, you fucked up. They're going to be like, bro, you're the leader. Like you the fucked up. Yeah. What happened? Right. So, so it's those two things. And this sometimes makes it hard because you put yourself on a lot of stress. You don't want to make, you don't, you want to always make the right decision. And, um, um, especially when you don't feel comfortable with this, with some ideas that maybe the team has, um, this makes it a lot harder because in the end you're the one, you're the one responsible and you're the one who, um, who people will talk to or will tell you you fucked up, uh, if, if actually things go wrong. This you like that good. position though? You like that responsibility? Yeah, sure. That's good. I, I like to take the decisions, man. Uh, I mean, in the end, I like to take decisions. Definitely. That's good. That's good. <laughs> no, not a lot of people like that. And also some people think they would like that, but then they realize what it actually means when you are the ones who takes decisions, then it's actually not as easy and as pleasant as it might sound. And that's why people like make fun of like, let's say presidents or company leaders or whatever, especially big companies, but they have no idea what, like, you know, an employee in a 10,000 people company they have their problems, but the guy that runs that company has 10,000 problems to deal with. Exactly. Right. And then he has to figure out how. Not only the problems he, and he has the consequences. Yeah. The consequences too. But what I'm just, I'm just saying like, you know, we always, um, we always just think of it in our own perspective, like, ah, but why don't you listen to my thing and this and that? And it's like, yo, you're not the only one. There's actually 10,000 of you. Right. And um, that's the tough thing is like sort of taking in all that information, taking in all that responsibility and trying to make things like actually float and flow. And that's the thing, like running a country or running a huge business is like very difficult. It's not that easy. There's so many moving parts and so many conflicts and contradicting things that it's like you have to really be, I think as a leader, that's maybe what you're saying, like a skill that's very important is like that openness in a way to hear things out process things from different perspectives and then spit out a final uh, calculation or decision that uh, in the end you hope has the highest chance of succeeding. And even if you fail, then you got to recover. But uh, like I said, you take the, in the end, you need to take the bird's eye view, helicopter view, whatever it is, you need to take everything into account and then you take the decision. So it is. 
Well, I was going to try to plug in some steinsailing.com, but I guess that's not a thing right now. So, so what's the deal? How, how do we wrap this up, Max? For me, whatever you like, bro. I mean, I think it was interesting to talk to you as always. Yeah. But um, I'm happy to just say, uh, call it a day. Exactly. Now you, <laughs> you know did that I, you did a hundred kilometer bike ride today, and uh, there you go, and 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 a lot of talking now with my mouth. So now I'm, I I have the full body workout. <laughs> <laughs> when you're riding a bicycle, just to finish that off, when you're riding the bike, do you get? Uh, is there any sort of soreness that happens, or is it? positioned everything pretty comfortably like or do you get like a backache because you have to lean forward or is the position all well theoretically if you set up your bike correctly there's not gonna be much like it, it sh you shouldn't have back problems especially when you're sitting like when you r make such long rides yeah and spend so much time on your bike if you set it up wrongly then you can actually damage a lot of like joints ligaments and so on but um yeah, sometimes you have a little little ache in the back, but I think the the main thing is just your legs, man. Your your legs. Are uh, you get tired in your legs? <laughs> is this a real question or? No, because I, the reason I'm saying it what is because. What do you think? Like you, you ride a bicycle for a hundred kilometers and you say, "No, I don't get tired in my legs." <laughs> the the thing that I would say is this: it's sort of You're like when I started when I started, when I started training like a marathon. <laughs> yeah, but it's like uh, with swimmers with uh with boxers with kiters with bicyclers you know like in the end when i started winging right my hands were very sore my arms yeah bro but your body then, always adapts but then you develop like of then you can just hold it there adapt. bro you cannot ride 100 kilometers if you have never said or you maybe you can but you're gonna be fucked up <laughs> yeah. and it's gonna take a long time if you never rode a bike before now if you did like, I don't know, 10 rides where you went like 50 kilometers, 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers. Yeah. Then you do the 100 kilometers and you're going to be fine. It's, that's, that's how it works. You train, What's the you longest have... bike ride that someone's done? Look it up. Okay, you're not that into it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> is the average speed though, that 25 uh, kilometers per hour that you're doing, is the average plus or minus? That was or... my no but i'm saying do like the professional bikers do bro, the higher average oh way higher they go oh, yeah. fucking crazy they're nuts bro don't, these guys are from a different world oh, okay for example the tour de france they do this like i don't know 150 that's like a normal i think a normal stage in tour de france like between 150 and 200 something kilometers yeah. this is one stage and they do it like every day yeah and they and they do a lot more meters in height and this is what fucks you up like you can go straight for a long time but to actually do the climbs this is what kills your legs and they do like whatever 150 50 kilometers and a 3000 meter climb in total and they have an average of 38 <laughs> Dude, it's nuts i'm telling yeah, you those guys are fucking those guys are absolute animals they're from another world but it wasn't, uh, who's the guy that won a bunch of them and he was for steroids? Well, like, it, what was the guy? A lot of people. Armstrong, you mean. Armstrong. Armstrong. Yeah. A lot of these guys. There's a lot of doping there. Probably still is, but still, even. Yeah, even, even if you are doping. doping, these guys are just, they, they do, I think, in annually, they ride like, I don't know, 20,000 kilometers, 30,000 kilometers per year. <laughs> well, yeah. That's a lot of bike riding. A lot of bike riding. No, well, let's see. Let's see how that develops for you. You know, I think it's interesting. I always see the guys biking here in the country, and it always like sort of sparks a little bit of interest just to go. You it's fun. A, a I don't know the roads there. I decide. I don't think Dominican Republic is so good for road biking. No, they're getting better now because they've they've been rebuilding so many roads now that everything is pretty much new. Oh, okay. Yeah. So especially like in the capital, like the guys that I see that go around the capital and stuff like that, it's perfect. Get into it, bro. Get into it. It's just that they get robbed. One guy got robbed. Like, uh, and then he's like, there's some people that carry guns on them, but he said biking with the gun is very uncomfortable. So that's the thing to protect themselves. All right, bro. Well. But in any case, Max, we'll end it there. Uh, it was great. It was a pleasure. You know, thanks for taking the time on this Sunday to, um, to chat sure. for myself. I'm going to actually go do sports and I think you're going to go resting. So the reverse. I'm going to cook. 
I'm gonna cook now and then uh, just fucking lay down, put my legs up. <laughs> <laughs> my legs are already up. They're up. They're up right here. Bro, well, I'm, I'm done. I'm yeah. Done. No, well, it was a pleasure, and um, yeah, we'll keep in touch as always. always. You know, do the check-ins once in a while. I gave you a book recommendation as well this time, so maybe maybe you read it. It's more raw, right? It's more factual, but uh, it's a good book, I think, and especially if you're gonna be reading. Like, well, you already did a bunch of reading for university, but if you're going to continue reading reports and all this type of stuff, I think it's really good. Uh, cool. It's good to sharpen those skills. I'll look into it, man. Thanks a lot. No, no worries. But all right. So we keep in touch and have a good one, Max. So do you, man. Take care, bro. Enjoy kiting today. Wing surfing. Wing foiling. Dang, go wing. I'll send you a photo of my new board. You're going to laugh. It's very small. <laughs> <You said it. laughs> All right, bro. Take care. All right. Bye. Yes, man.